the closure of 15 salmon farms in BC, a major blow for an industry whose future was already uncertain. We have been singled out uh, as a scapegoat for this industry and we see ourselves as part of the solution. For years, the farms have been blamed for harming wild salmon populations, though there's an ongoing disagreement about the science behind those claims. At the centre of the debate is the question of whether wild salmon become infected by sea lice as they migrate past fish farms along the BC coast. The Discovery Islands area is a key migration route for wild salmon, where narrow passages bring migrating juvenile salmon into close contact with the farms. Sea lice thrive in the farm's dense environments and can weaken and even kill young salmon. In a statement explaining the decision to close the farms, the DFO said only there is uncertainty with respect to the risks, calling it a difficult but necessary decision. This again seems like a political decision. In fact, we're very aware that you know this is a political decision. It's bowing to environmental campaigners in this polarized situation here. Salmon farms are required to perform monthly counts of sea lice on their fish. DFO officials then perform audits to make sure those numbers are accurate and conduct their own studies. But academics across Canada have long been critical of DFO research and called for more transparency. All these scientists see the same thing as I do. When you have salmon farms, you get sea lice on juvenile wild salmon. There's also infection with the viruses and the bacteria that are flourishing in these farms. So the salmon farming industry, you know, can just stop struggling for a minute and release their data on sea lice and and let's have a look. With the 15 farms permanently closed, up to 1,500 jobs are now at risk. The province says while it respects the DFO's decision, it's disappointed by the lack of plan to support First Nations communities and workers that depend on the farms. Michelle Gassoub, CBC News, Vancouver.